Good day, great learners, and welcome back. You are now tuned into your second lesson of Economic Management Sciences, Term 1. As you already know, we are focusing on the economics and entrepreneurship part of the subject. In the previous lesson, we talked about the government, its different roles, and its different levels. Now today, we're going to be focusing on the government's role in relation to household and businesses. Before we start the lesson, make sure you subscribe. And since we've already covered subscription, make sure you have your books and pens ready. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, grade eight learners, you will remember that in the last time we spoke about different role players in the economy, namely the government, household, and businesses. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the government and its role in relation to the household and to businesses. We will also take a look at the resources that the government provides to us as the citizens of the country. Okay, so before I start, who of you can tell your teachers of a few services that the government provides to us? Pause the video and discuss in class. All right, well done. I'm sure you could name a few. So let's begin with the national government and its role. Now, grade eight learners, before we can understand the role of national government, we need to understand that for them to provide services to its citizens, they do require funds. Now, where do they get the funds from? From the national budget. And the national budget is something that is provided from the taxpayers. In the next lesson, you will learn more about the national budget and how it's divided between the departments and provincial government. Okay, so back to the national government. Now remember grade eight learners, we spoke about different departments and the different ministers of each department. Now, each department has a sole responsibility of ensuring that its funds are allocated effectively. Now, for example, the Minister of Basic Education is in charge of education. They are responsible for hiring new teachers, building new schools, and launching new projects. Now, these are one of many other responsibilities that they have. Furthermore, it's important that the government uses its finances effectively, and they can do this by joining forces or hand with the private sector. All right, now let's look at an example. We all know that South Africa faces a high unemployment rate. And in this case, the government can ensure that they partner up with the private sector to use its human resources to create more jobs for its people. The government also has a responsibility to take care of our natural resources. Raw materials such as minerals, coal, fisheries, etc. are scarce and the government must make sure that the businesses and its citizens work sparingly with these natural resources. For example, putting legislation and laws in place to limit the amount of mining and fishing activities that take place. It is also important that the government not only has these laws in place, but also enforce them properly. Now, grade eight learners, can you think of a few other examples of natural resources that are scarce? Stop this video and discuss it in class. Now let's move over to the provincial government and its role. The provincial government has a more direct responsibility over its residents and the province. They are directly responsible to either water, sanitation, healthcare, and education of the province that they govern. The provincial government also receives a portion of the national budget for their province and specific departments which they must use efficiently so that the residents of that province can benefit from it. Okay, let's look at the government as a whole. So in this case, it's important to realize that the role of the government is sometimes a consumer and a supplier in the same way that a household is a consumer and supplier sometimes. 
There is always an interaction between the government and households. Sometimes the government is a supplier by providing services and products to households, such as water and electricity. And other times the government is a consumer when it buys labor and goods and services from households. Now let's move over to the government and its relation to businesses. Just in the same way as government provides services to households, they also provide services to business, such as water supply, sanitation, disposal, etc. However, there are some additional services that the government provides to businesses, such as government tenders. Now for example, for construction companies, the government can provide a tender to a construction company and once successful, they will build municipal roads or buildings and once they've provided that service, they will gain an income. The government also plays a major role in making sure there is trade amongst the international community. So this allows companies to also trade with foreign countries. It is also the government's responsibility to ensure that they provide legislation to protect employees from unfair practices. This will obviously be a direct impact on businesses. Finally, the government plays a role as a supplier and consumer within the business sector. The government is often a consumer where they purchase businesses' products or use their services so that the government can provide a service to the households. Now, another example of this is when government hospitals are being used by the household. In this case, it is the businesses that build the hospitals for the government, and so they get compensated for that. At other times, the government takes the role as a supplier to businesses by creating infrastructure such as roads, airports, and ports, so that they may be used for exporting goods. Furthermore, it is important to realize that it is not only households that pay taxes to the government. Businesses also pay taxes to the government. And in return, government uses the taxes to provide households and businesses with the basic services. So as you can see, this is a cycle with interactions amongst the government, the businesses, and the households. Okay, grade eight learners. Thank you so much for joining us on our second lesson of EMS, where we were focusing on the government. In the next lesson, we'll be taking a look at the national budget. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, the description below has a self-assessment link. Look through it and we'll see you next time.